NFL free agency has been wild, to say the least. The entire landscape of the NFL has changed in so many ways for so many different teams. A lot of teams did, you know, stay the same or, you know, similar. And there's a lot of moves that just were unexpected and some that were very expected. So we're going to be going over those in this video. We're going to be going over each team. It's probably going to take a while, uh, you know, point out the impo important moves and whatnot. Um, so kind of an announcement kind of thing for future videos. I have I've started creating my own grading system for NFL draft prospects. I have completed uh, just defensive tackle and defensive end. And if that's something you guys are interested in seeing my grades and like, you know, how I created that and what, what goes into that and whatnot, let me know. Um, I mean, it's just a whole bunch of numbers and shit. So I don't know if that's something you guys be interested in seeing, but, and a lot of those grades, you know, kind of surprising the way they turned out. It factors in a lot of things, kind of, I mean, it's kind of simple, kind of complicated. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know. Uh, I will continue working on other positions because my grading formula will be different for each position because, I mean, there's things you need to factor in, right? But, you know, in this video, we're going to be going over free agency moves and whatnot. And then in the next video, we're going to do a post free agency mock draft. I wanted to wait until after the, you know, the first big wave of free agency hit because I thought about doing this after the first day and I knew that there were going to be more moves by the minute, by the hour. So, this is about three days, three or four days after the whole, like, you know, the DeAndre Swift was like the really, the first real big one. So a couple days after that, it is Friday. It is the night of Thursday, the 14th, as I record this, but it is 12, 18 in the morning on Friday, the 15th. So a lot of things will probably happen today. I mean, a lot of things happened yesterday, like, you know, Keenan Allen, um, a whole bunch of crazy unexpected things happen so we're just going to jump straight into it i'm not going to be doing like grades or anything like letter grades we're just going to be going over and what i think so mr trubisky returning back to the bills completely forgot that he was on there for a year uh two-year deal so he's probably you know going to be a career backup brought in curtis samuel today three year 30 million that's not bad i mean you know it's always receiver mocked to the mocked to them so if the receivers that they like aren't on the board, they could pivot to another position like, you know, linebacker, probably not round one, but, you know, corner, probably don't go safety at pick like, what, 27. So it gives them more flexibility, right, in the draft. And that's what a lot of these moves have given us or given these teams is more flexibility for the draft. So Curtis Samuel, I like it. Resigned Deion Dawkins. Seems a little bit of an overpay, you know, what, $20 million a year. I mean, it's, he's a left tackle. He's going to demand a lot of money. Uh, Resign A.J. Epinesa. He's a good depth piece at defensive end. Uh, Resign Daquan Jones. Another, you know, decent depth piece at D-tackle. And they, this doesn't show, like, who all they cut. Is that something I can look at? No. Let's see. Because um, I want to see, like, you know. Ah, here we go. Is this something, is this going to be better? Um, okay, so yeah, we can look at departures. So, I mean, they lost Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, Trey White. You know, they cut almost all their defense. They lost almost all their defense. Lost Gabe Davis. I mean, yeah, that's what uh, Curtis Samuel pretty much is, their Gabe Davis replacement. You know, just a solid receiver, too. So, uh, don't hate it. Dolphins brought in Jonu Smith. I mean, they don't use tight end a whole bunch, so getting a mediocre one isn't bad. Five million for over uh, a year for two years, not bad. Uh, we brought in Robert Jones. I mean, they lost uh, Isaiah Wynn. Uh, I don't. He hasn't gone anywhere, but he'll probably end up signing somewhere else. Lost Robert Hunt. Lost Robert Williams. They will probably go O line in the draft, and. I mean, they brought in Kendall Fuller uh, as of, I think, yesterday or maybe this morning, I think. Uh, brought in Jordan Poyer. Did I um, did I say Jordan Poyer for Kendall Fuller? I meant Kendall Fuller. And then re-signed Nick Needham. I mean, he's a depth piece. Ooh, Jake Bailey re-signed with the Dolphins. I know, league-changing move right there. But uh, brought in Neville Gallimore. Another, yeah, a lot of these are depth pieces, but brought in Shaq Barrett. 
I think that that'll be solid for him. Um, another edge player after losing uh, Ogba and Andrew Van Ginkle, Justin Houston, Melvin Ingram. Just another rotational defensive end kind of guy. And then for the Patriots, did a lot of things. Uh, brought in, re- brought back Jacoby Brissett, who was, I mean, their QB room a couple of years ago was Tom Brady, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, and Jacoby Brissett. So, I mean, Joby, Br- Jacoby Brissett has just been passed around like a joint at a frat house, but he's still a solid QB. He'll probably be the starter. Um, I mean, as of right now, he will be the starter. And if they take a QB, I think he will sit behind Brissett for a while. Brought in Antonio Gibson. I mean, three or 11, 11 and a quarter. It's not awful. Um, kind of that pass catching kind of guy, while Ramondre Stevenson's that, you know, downhill rusher kind of guy, bell cow, maybe. I don't, I don't know if they're going to use him like that. Uh, brought back Kendrick Bourne. As a Chiefs fan, I was very disappointed in this. Oh, no, no, yeah. Repping my Sammy Watkins jersey. Love Sammy. Um, I, yeah, I was really hoping. Kendrick Bourne would go to the Chiefs. He's ripped. Have you seen his Instagram? This guy is shredded. And I know like all NFL players are, but go look at Kendrick Bourne's Instagram. This guy is ripped. Uh, move, brought back Jalen Rager with uh, all that money guaranteed. That'll change him. Uh, re brought brought back Hunter Henry. And then they ended up losing uh, Mike Gesicki, who went to the Bengals. Uh, yeah. And lost Mike Gesicki, brought in Austin Hooper. I mean, it's 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 a move, I guess. Um, brought back Mike Onwenu, who was a real... I was really expecting him to leave. I thought he'd go to, like, the Bengals or something. But they managed to bring him back. Three or 57. I mean, these guards are getting paid. Which, as a Chiefs fan, not excited for Trey Smith to get paid. Because probably won't be us paying him, unfortunately. But, you know, he'll be with us when we three-peat. So, uh, brought back Josh Uche. You know, another rotational edge kind of guy. Uh, Sion Taki Taki. Uh, I think he's always known. The only reason I feel like he's known is because that one announcer clip with like Taki Taki on the tackle tackle, which is funny, but I feel like that's the only reason his name is really known. Uh, moving on to the Jets, brought Tyrod Taylor in for two years for $18 million. I mean, $9 million for a backup QB. Is he the backup though? I mean, the writing's on the wall. Zach Wilson's probably gone. I saw that he like is starting to sell his house or something in New Jersey. Not really surprising. He'll probably be on the move, traded for. I mean, if Mac Jones went for a sixth, you're gonna want like the last pick of the draft for Zach Wilson. I don't think. I think he's probably just gonna be cut. To be honest, brought in Morgan Moses from the Ravens. Uh, kind of just a pick swap. So, I mean, a swap of fourth round picks plus a sixth round pick to get him. So. A solid tackle. They're losing Mackay Becton, who I think visited the Bengals. Has he signed yet? He's not signed, but he is visiting the Bengals. They lost Dwayne Brown, who's ancient. So Morgan Moses, he's a very solid tackle. He was with the Ravens, at least. So don't hate it. John Simpson, I mean, two years, $18 million. Who else got that? Where did I just see that? Oh, Tyrod Taylor. So, yeah, I mean, John Simpson's just a guy that could step in and play any O like guard tackle position they need him to he's got kind of that flexibility so if they need him to step in he can brought in Javon Kinlaw I mean that doesn't really do anything for me uh Ravens brought in Derrick Henry obviously the big one um I mean they're probably gonna lose Dobbs Dobbins yeah Dobbins I don't know why I said Dobbs I was thinking of Josh Dobbs for some reason yeah so they're losing all these running backs Dalvin Cook Dobbins lost Gus Edwards already Melvin Gordon I mean <laughs> Cook and Gordon didn't really do much, but they still got uh, Keaton Mitchell plus Derrick Henry. Solid backfield plus Lamar. I mean, it's scary, but they're not going to use him in the playoffs, are they? Uh, brought back Nelson Aguilar. That's what I like to call him in my head. But brought back Nelson Aguilar. He's just a he's a depth piece at receiver. It's just a one-year deal. But the big one, brought back Justin Matabuike for four years, $98 million, which is a a lot of money, fun fact, but I absolutely worth it. Worth every penny. Glad they got him looked or uh, signed to a long-term deal, so he's not gonna hold out or anything. Didn't really do much outside of Derrick Henry and Matabuike. Now Bengals brought in Zach Moss, cut uh, Joe Mixon, who went on to go join the Texans. 
So yeah, cut cut Mixon, brought in Zach Moss. He's a cheaper option. He's solid. Tag T Higgins. I think he stays. I don't think a team will trade for him. And I say that, and he'll probably get traded tomorrow. Brought in Mike Gesicki, who's solid. I mean, they lost what Irv Smith, who signed with the Chiefs. So, I mean, Irv Smith wasn't incredible. So brought in Mike Gesicki. He's a great fit for the Bengals. Uh, he's got the hardest gritty out there. Challenges Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, almost up there with Mac Jones's gritty. But I think Mike Gesicki makes a case for the best for the best gritty. Uh, brought in Sheldon Rankins, who's a very solid defensive tackle. You know, kind of look to boost that front seven some more. Akeem Davis Gatherer, he's there. Brought back Von Bell um, and, and brought in Geno Stone. So they're really trying to boost that secondary. They, um, you know, Daxon Hill kind of broke out onto the scene this year after a quiet rookie year. Uh, Jordan Battle was pretty solid this year as well. But, you know, just kind of get those veterans back there. They're in win now mode. So it's kind of what they're doing. Browns brought in Jameis Winston. Um, I mean, got to eat that W, I guess. Um, <laughs> if, uh, what's his nuts? Deshaun Watson. I don't know why I forgot his name. Yeah, if if he starts to, you know, underperform, get hurt, Jameis is a great guy to step in. Uh, yeah, crab legs, there's something there, I guess. You don't see a lot of crab legs in Cleveland, I guess. Uh, Jerry Judy brought him in for a fourth and sixth round pick. Doesn't really push the needle too much for him, but he's there. You know, same thing with Elijah Moore last year. They'll get traded. Ooh, they got Elijah Moore. Ooh, they got Jerry Judy. They're not going to do much. But, you know, another receiver in there with Amari Cooper. So that's solid. Brought in or brought back Zadarius Smith, just another guy for the other side of Miles um, Garrett. And then Jordan Hicks, solid linebacker, not too bad. Pittsburgh Steelers brought in Russell Wilson on the bare minimum, $1.2 million. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Why wouldn't you bring him in, right? Because, you know, maybe teach Kenny Pickett, maybe play over Kenny Pickett. I mean, Kenny Pickett has not looked good, probably isn't going to be good. I think that's safe to say for, like, he's, what, 25, 26 now? He's, he was an older prospect. I think he was 23 coming out in 22. So, you know, not that Russell Wilson is exactly a spring chicken, but Russell Wilson's solid. I think it, it makes the case. I mean, if the Steelers made the playoffs this year with Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph and whoever else they had throwing the rock over there, I think that they are a playoff lock pretty much with Russ. So unless he's doing high knees on the plane again. Brought in Patrick Queen, you know, joining the ops, whatever. <laughs> it's just funny. But, you know, helping boost that front seven some more. Steel Curtain 2.0. I don't know. I feel like it's an overpay. I think... Playing with Roquan Smith really did boost his, um, you know, stats and his grades and whatnot. So, I mean, I, it's obviously not a bad. He's not a bad bad player, obviously, but I think a bit over overinflated. I think's the term there. Brought in Dante Jackson for Deontay Johnson, pretty much just straight up in a pick swap. So they get another corner. Once again, giving them flexibility once the draft rolls around, so they don't aren't, aren't pressured to take a corner in round one. They did release Patrick Peterson, so he's pretty much their Pat Pete replacement. Got rid of Deontay Johnson, so they could potentially look at receiver in the draft. I mean, they got George Pickens, Calvin Austin. I feel like I'm forgetting one. I feel like I'm forgetting one. Maybe not. So yeah, not a lot of great players. Didn't they cut Allen Robinson? I think that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, they cut Allen Robinson. That's who I was thinking of. So not a lot, not a very deep wide receiver room. So they could look to upgrade that in the draft. Maybe O line. It'll either be receiver or O line in the first round, more than likely. Texans brought in Joe Mixon, solid rotational guy with Damian Pierce, who did not look good last year. You know that you lost Devin Singletary, and I think Joe Mixon's a great guy for um, uh, C.J. Stroud. I blank on names when I record. I don't know. Brought back Dalton Schultz for three years, $36 million. Not bad. I don't know why I said million like that. Brought in Danico Autry, who at the time, you know, when they lost Jonathan Grenard, it's like, okay, Autry's that, you know, veteran kind of guy who can inside-outside flexibility, can establish, you know, hold down the, f the fort for the front seven. And then they brought in Daniil Hunter, which, I mean, Daniil Hunter with Will Anderson Jr., scary, scary stuff. Didn't really, I mean, then you got... Uh, Autry, who will probably play more on the inside now, replacing um, Sheldon Rankins. So 
Their front seven has absolutely been boosted. You, you replace Sheldon Rankins and Jonathan Grenard with Danico Autry and Daniil Hunter. Upgrade at both positions, arguably. So that's not bad. Brought in Aziz Alshire. You know, um, three years, $34 million is kind of a lot for Aziz Alshire. But they got Christian Harris already, Henry Toa Toa, who's, you know, he's, he's working. You know, he's developing who I, re- I did really like him coming out of college. I thought his name was like Tooto or something, but it's Toa Toa. It's spelled crazy, like T-O apostrophe O-T-O apostrophe O. Very, um, I'm not going to say a general area or culture because I don't want to go there. <laughs> so, you know, brought in Aziz Alshire. We'll just put it that way. Brought back Lonnie Johnson. or Yeah, they brought back Lonnie Johnson. He was on there a couple years ago with, uh, Justin Reed in that squad when they lost to the Chiefs in the wild card? No, divisional. It was the divisional round. So he was on the Saints. He did actually did go to the Chiefs for a bit, and he went to the Saints, and now he's back with the Texans. Brought back Desmond King, solid. Brought in Jeff Okuda. So they're really looking to boost that secondary. Eric Murray, I mean, he's he exists, but Jeff Okuda, ob- obviously a draft bust, but he's he's not awful. He's just not good. Colts brought in Mean Joe Flacco. Love this move. You know, good veteran presence for Anthony Richardson and could step in if Richardson were to underperform or hopefully not get injured. Brought in Trey Sermon, who's – he just disappeared. I swear he was, like, good for a couple games with the Niners and then just gone because Elijah Mitchell took over for him and then brought in CMC, obviously. Brought back Michael Pittman after franchise tagging him. Um, yeah, got the non-exclusive tag, and they re-signed him three years, seventy million, which is a lot, but forty-six guaranteed max value of. So he's got about one and a half with incentives, and I mean obviously from forty-six to seventy with incentives, and then brought back Grover Stewart for a lot of money. It just says three years, but it's a lot of money. Uh, they, okay, they did bring back Kenny Moore. Uh, I hadn't seen that yet. Three years, thirty million, ten million a year. Not bad for Kenny Moore. Brought back Zaire Franklin, who like led the team, the league in tackles. I don't know if he finished like that, or I know he did at one point. And then, oh, who, who Trevor, you got some competition here. Jaguars brought in my, Mac Jones. I mean, I don't really understand this because, like, oh, like, yeah, you need a backup, but, like, you can sign a backup. I don't get why you need to trade a sick. Like, I don't get why you need to trade a top 200 pick for Mac Jones to be your backup. So, it's, it's something. It seems like a waste of a pick to me because he's only going to be there a year. He's going to be gone after this year. It makes no sense. But brought in Gabe Davis, overpay of the century. I mean, that's what, $13 million a year? It's a lot for Gabe Davis. I mean, with the inflation of the re- a max value of $50 million, I mean, I get that the receiver market and pretty much every market at every position is inflated more and more every year, but... Three years, 39 is a lot for Gabe Davis. Did bring in Devin Duvernay. All right, so they got their punt and, punt and kick returner. Brought in uh, Ezra Cleveland and Mitch Morse. So giving them more flexibility in the draft. Not pressure to take an O-lineman in the first round. Maybe look to do that in the second. Um, I mean, also with Gabe Davis, you know, take some pressure off, forcing a receiver in the first. Maybe look to upgrade. Uh, I mean, their secondary is kind of fine. They brought in Darnell Savage. Ronald Darby exists. They brought in Eric Armstead. So this gives you flexibility to take your highest graded O lineman or receiver, whoever you choose. It will probably be one of those positions still, but gives you more flexibility. So you're not SOL if you miss out on an O lineman or receiver, right? Tag Josh Allen. I think that they, he, they will reach a long term extension with him before the season begins. And it will be a lot of money, no doubt. And he's earned it. He's been amazing. Titans brought in Mason Rudolph. I mean, Jake Locker 2.0. Not like draft or anything, but he just seems like a Jake Locker kind of guy. I don't know. But brought in Mason Rudolph. Brought in Tony Pollard. I don't know why this is all highlighted like that. Can you guys read that better? Yeah, probably. I'll do that. So, yeah, brought in Tony P. I mean, seems like a lot of money. Could I mean, they got Ty J Spears, but... Good rotational in the backfield. Brought in Calvin Ridley, four years, $92 million. Makes the A.J. Brown, makes uh, getting rid of A.J. Brown look even dumber since they paid all this money for Calvin Ridley, who's 29. 
compared to A.J. Brown when he was in his, what, mid to early 20s in his prime, and look at him now. Uh, brought in Lloyd Cushenberry, you know, helping boost that O-line. This will probably... So in my mock drafts before, I've given them usually like Romo Dunze, but I think with the addition of Calvin Ridley plus, I mean, Nick Westbrook, Brooke Akeen does not prevent you from taking a receiver, but the addition of Calvin Ridley kind of does. So, I mean, they already got uh, D-Hop, now Calvin Ridley, trying to keep developing Traylon Burks. I don't think he's going to end up turning out, but hopefully he does for his sake. But I think this pretty much all but confirms O-Lineman in the first round. Probably Joe Alt or Fashanu, maybe Talisa Fuwaga, but probably Alt or Fashanu. Uh, brought in Kenneth Murray, who's fine. He's not amazing. Uh, Chidobia Wuzier is a great one after losing, uh, oh, what's his name? He wears like a headband or something. I don't know. Uh, Sean Murphy Bunting, yeah. So after losing him, that's an upgrade, 100% bringing in Chidobia Wuzier. Uh, Broncos brought back fullback Michael Burton, who. What was he on the Saints? I think that he went to the Chiefs and then he was on the Broncos last year and will be this year. Is Jason McCourty like a like a like a news dude now or something? I don't know. Uh, brought in Lil Jordan Humphrey, elite name. Brought in Malcolm Roach, who's actually not terrible. Brought in Brandon Jones, who's their presumable uh, Justin Simmons replacement. So that's something. Brought in P.J. Locke, Will Lutz. I mean, not a lot of moves. They're just kind of clearing house. Now the Chiefs, oh boy. Um, so I was, I was hanging out with my girlfriend, and you know we're watching a movie. And I check my phone. I see, oh wow, the the Chargers traded Keenan Allen. Okay, I scroll down a bit. Chiefs signed Marquise Hollywood Brown. I was praying for it. I kind of wanted Curtis Samuel, and then I saw that we could get Marquise Brown. Wanted him more. He's faster. He's younger. He's got the cool. Uh, he's got the cool uh, name, uh, Hollywood, and he's an Oklahoma guy. I'm an Oklahoma fan, and OU legend. The Chiefs love their Oklahoma players, don't they? Um, Orlando Brown Jr. went from Orlando to Hollywood. Okay. Uh, yeah, Orlando Brown, uh, Creed Humphrey, their long snapper James Winchester's from Oklahoma, and maybe there, there's more guys. I don't know. Brought in Irv Smith. I mean, he's their Jody Fordson replacement, just a backup tight end who's solid. Although I do love Jody Fordson. I miss him. He signed with the Dolphins. Makes me sad. Locked in Chris Jones, five years, 158. So if we do some quick maths, 158.75 over five years, 31.75 million a year. I mean, the mo the the big bulk of the Chiefs' uh, cap hit is going to Mahomes and Chris Jones, and then it's split up evenly out of a bunch of guys. And I think this is where the Chiefs need to stop spending money. Just stop it. I get that you want to th that we want a three peat, and I get that, but we don't want to waste our money. That's probably why they signed Hollywood Brown to a one-year deal instead of two years. You know, give us more money next year because we're going to need to extend Creed Humphrey, Nick Bolton, Trey Smith. You're eventually going to have to extend Trent McDuffie, George Karloftis. A lot of guys are looking for extensions soon. So, you know, save our money, roll it into next year and the years after so we can get the extensions done sooner rather than later. And hopefully not let as many guys walk. So, yeah, Chris Jones, I mean, I'm glad he's back. But Legereus Sneed probably will not be. He'll probably get traded for maybe an early second-round pick. Um, I don't see... I mean, the Chiefs aren't going to trade him to a contender, especially not in the AFC. He'll he'll be sent to a, a shit team, if we're being honest. But I love Legereus Sneed. Uh, hopefully, maybe we get a long-term deal with him, but probably won't happen. He'll probably get traded in the coming days. Uh, brought in Matt Ariza, um, cleared of all charges. Good for him. Um, cheaper than Tommy Townsend. Probably a better leg than Tommy Townsend. And, you know, just re-sign Derek Nottie, who's great in the run game, not so great in pass. Uh, re sign Drew Tranquil, picked him over Willie Gay. That's fine. Um, I mean, just solid moves by the Chiefs all around. I don't hate it. I'm happy as a Chiefs fan. Raiders brought in mustache legend Gardner Minshew. Two years, $25 million. I mean, backups are getting paid. Because we saw, uh, what did Joe Flacco get paid? Uh, one year, eighty-eight point seven million 
four and a half guaranteed. That's a lot for a backup nowadays. So backups are getting paid. And then the big one, I mean, Amir Abdullah re-signed. Andre James signed. He's solid. Brought in Christian Wilkins. Him with Max Crosby and hopefully not for the Chiefs' sake, but hopefully for his sake, Tyree Wilson looks to break onto the scene. So solid front seven they're building over there in Vegas. Chargers brought in Gus Bus. It's solid after losing uh, Eckler, who's ancient. Brought in Will Disley, just a blocking tight end. Brought in Hayden Hurst. I mean, just not a lot of moves. Then they cut. They cut uh, Mike Williams. Cut Mike Williams. Traded Keenan Allen. Yeah, that wide receiver room is not looking great right now. Um, what, Tyler Guyton? Um, Quentin Johnson, obviously, who was not good as a rookie. Please, I hope they don't get Malik Neighbors. I hope they trade down and get, like, a Brian Thomas or even a Romo Dunze. Just not Malik Neighbors because he's so good. Malik Neighbors is so good. On the off chance they get Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm probably going to have to, you know. But they probably will look to go receiver in round one, unfortunately. And that's a lot of white. Uh, Cowboys, big, big moves. Brought in Eric Kendricks, who... Did, in fact, sign with the Cowboys. Thanks, Tom Pelosaro. And re-signed Jordan Lewis. It says sign, but it's a re-sign. He was on there. And brought back their long snapper. Making moves over there in Dallas. Uh, Giants brought in Drew Locke. He will compete for the starting position. And he could probably win it, if we're being honest. I mean, it's hard to compete when uh, Danny Dimes is a torn ACL. So I don't know if he'll be ready to compete. But Drew Locke will probably start week one, if I had to bet. Brought in Devin Singletary, Singletary to replace Saquon. Cheaper. I think he's about the same age, I want to say. Uh, I think Saquon was 18 and Singletary might have been 20 or maybe 2019. I think he was 2020, though. And then Isaiah McKenzie, another just mid receiver, another mid slot receiver. They just love those kind of guys. Um, uh, Jermaine Illuminor, he's a solid guy that could step in and play. John Runyon, I mean, Jermaine Illuminor will probably play over Evan Neal if they're looking to push to be somewhat competitive this year. Brought in John Runyon, who will probably play right guard, if I had to guess. And then the big one, brought in Brian Burns for a second-round pick and a... Uh, they brought in Brian Burns with a fourth-round pick and then sent away a second- and fifth-round pick, which is crazy if you're the Panthers because... Last year, they turned down an offer from the Rams of two first-round picks. Things are falling apart in Carolina, but gave him a massive contract. That's why I do think that Josh Allen will probably get paid sim very similar to this, I think, is what Josh Allen's contract will look like. Eagles made a lot of moves, especially today. Um, obviously, brought in Saquon. Great for Saquon, great for the Eagles. I'm, maybe it's another Chiefs-Eagles Super Bowl this year. Uh, brought in Devontae Parker to be a wide receiver three, maybe four. Albert O. Okweigbunam. It's something. It's it's a last name. It's one of a it's one of the last names of all time. Uh, Landon Dickerson re-signed for a bunch of money. He's very good, obviously. Uh, brought in Brandon Graham or brought back Brandon Graham. Great locker room guy. Great locker room guy. Funny as all hell. Brought in Bryce Huff, who is kind of surprised he got this much money, but he's great in the past game. Not so great in the run, but gets a lot of pressures. So, I mean, with them possibly losing Hassan Reddick, Bryce House a great guy to replace him. Brought in Zach Bond, brought in Julian Aquara, brought in Devin White, reboot, just reloading or revamping, I guess you could say, that linebacker core because it was never good. Devin White, I mean, is he good? Is he bad? It's hard to say, but I think he will probably do pretty good in Philly. Brought back C.J. Gardner-Johnson, all that talking shit for him, saying Eagles fans suck, which, I mean. But <laughs> going back to him, he went to that Super Bowl again, which they never got. And they re-signed their whole special teams crew, so that's cool. Uh, Commanders, okay, we're almost done. Commanders brought in a whole lot. Marcus Mariota, I mean, they traded away uh, Sam Howell to the Seahawks today. Which, solid move for the Seahawks, you know, getting a guy that can learn behind uh, Geno. And then potentially take over next year, hard to say. Brought in Marcus Mariota, who can develop, or I guess kind of mentor and be with their rookie, whether that's Drake May or 
probably won't be Caleb Williams, but it'll either be Drake May or um, Jaden Daniels. So whichever they prefer to go there, Marcus Mariota could potentially start week one, you know, kind of work in the rookie QB. Brought in Austin Eckler. He's a solid pairing with, uh, uh, what's his nuts, Brian, Brian Robinson, which, I mean, on paper, and what not on paper, but what everybody's saying is, oh, Austin Eckler's washed. He's not good. But he's not going to have the main role like he did in L.A. In L.A., he was the feature back. But in Washington, he's going to you know split time with Brian Robinson and take the workload off of Eckler as much. If he's utilized right, which I do think he probably will be, if both of them are utilized to their strengths, I think this is going to be a great run game for Washington. Brought in Zach Ertz, I mean, Logan Thomas, they cut him and they replaced him with Zach Ertz. It's like the meme of the guy holding up the shirt for, that he got for like Christmas or something with the same shirt he has on. So that's that. Brought in Nick Allegretti. I mean, following, uh, what's his name? Andrew Wiley over to Washington. Brought in Tyler Biedez. B Biedez? I think that's how you pronounce it. Three year, 30 million, starting center, plug and play, solid. Brought in Cleveland Farrell, who's actually not terrible, honestly. He's solid. I mean, he's not great. Or very good, but he's he exists. Kind of revamped their you know defensive ends. Brought in Dorrance Armstrong, Cleveland Farrell, Frankie Louvu. So they're not pressured to go edge rusher in the draft. You know more flexibility, like we keep saying. Brought in Bobby Wagner, getting paid a whole lot of money. Why not? Brought in Jeremy Chin to replace Cam Curl, who signed with where did Cam Curl go? He went to the Rams, I want to say. So Jeremy Chin, solid for him. Uh, we got two divisions left. We're almost there. Stick with me. Uh, Bears brought in Brett Rippon. Okay. Brought in DeAndre Swift, who is going to be their running back, obviously. Kind of sw- split with Roshan Johnson a bit. You know, share with Roshan Johnson and Khalil Herbert. But he'll, he will be the feature back. And then the big one that happened today. Brought in Keenan Allen for a fourth-round pick, which I think that's solid value. He's old, kind of injury-prone, and... Mostly old, <laughs> probably will have to take on his contract for this year. It's just a one-year rental, essentially. Maybe re-sign him for another year after this, but probably not. Uh, I do think he will eventually retire in L.A., maybe even a one-day contract. I don't know. But very solid for them to pair with DJ Moore and Caleb Williams. I don't think – I mean, Justin Fields' trade value is just decreasing by the day. He's probably going to get moved for a fourth-round pick, if I'm being honest. Maybe not even that. Maybe like a fifth-round pick or a fourth and a pick swap or something. It won't be a lot to get Justin Fields. I think Minnesota should trade for him. Like, they don't have any QBs on roster that are good. Like, who do they bring in? Sam Darnold. Yeah, like, come on now. You Justin Fields is definitely better than Sam Darnold, especially long-term. But brought in uh, Ryan Bates, Matt Pryor. Solid. Oh, they agreed to terms. Okay. Per agent. Thank you. Um, yeah, just kind of adding depth to that O-line. Brought in Gerald Everett to be a solid tight end, too, behind Cole Komet. Um, resigned Jalen Johnson. Absolutely worth it. Worth every penny. Four-year, 76. What is that? 76 over four, 19 million. Not bad for Jalen Johnson. Locking down over there. And brought in Kevin Byard. I mean, their secondary is very, very good. They got Kevin Byard, Jaquan Brisker, Jalen Johnson, Tyreek Stevenson, Kyler Gordon. Like, they got a very good secondary over there in uh, Chicago. So, once again, adding flexibility. Look at QB. And maybe not even receiver anymore at nine because they got, got Keenan Allen. I mean, they still could potentially, um, similar to the Seahawks a couple years ago, um, last year. <laughs> but, I mean, probably looked at a defensive end, like a Jared Verse, Leatu Watu kind of guy for – uh, Chicago at pick nine. I'm not a huge fan of Dallas Turner, if I'm being honest. Especially in, I wasn't a fan of him before, and my grading system confirmed that. So do with that as you will. But, you know, solid solid additions for Chicago here. Lions re-signed uh, Graham Glasgow. Did they re-sign him? Yeah, yeah, they re-signed him. He was already on the team. Brought in Dan Skipper, locker room guy, uh, hard knocks legend. Brought in Marcus Davenport. He probably won't play, but Big one, brought in DJ Reader, who, I mean, D-tackle's kind of been mocked to the Lions for a while, mostly defensive tackle, defensive end, those kind of positions. So, 
you know, boost in that front seven, get some more help for Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, Jalen Reeves, Maven, solid linebacker. Big one, they traded for Carlton Davis. So, because, yeah, corner's also been mocked to them. But, you know, once again, like I keep saying, a lot of these moves are giving them flexibility. Not pressure to take a defensive lineman, not pressure to take a corner. So if a good one at either position falls to him, you just take him. Don't think twice. And uh, brought back Emmanuel Mosley. So plus Mosley, Carlton Davis, uh, Cam Sutton. Did they cut? Did they cut Cam Sutton? Uh, north. I feel like I saw somewhere that they cut him. I guess not. But they did lose T.J. Gardner Johnson, uh, Tracy Walker. That's who it was. So solid additions to that secondary help boost them. Maybe they take a Tyler Newbin towards the end of the first. Uh, Packers cut Aaron Jones, but brought in Josh Jacobs. Whole bunch of money. He's still solid. He's got to pay for nine baby mamas. So I'm not even exaggerating. You can Google it. Uh, yeah, got a lot of money for him. Good for Josh Jacobs. Brought back A.J. Dillon. Probably just going to be like a one or two year deal for not a whole lot of money, but a good running back too. And not really much outside of that. Keyshawn Nixon, three years, 18. He's solid. Oh, yeah, the big one. It was, it was kind of hard to see. Yeah, Xavier McKinney, big one. Lost to Arnell Savage. Upgraded Xavier McKinney. Four years, 68. What is that? 68 over four. I'm not quick with math. 17 million a year. Not bad for Xavier McKinney. Uh, he's young. He's good. And that is a very that is very much a Packers addition. Uh, we're almost... Oh, no, we have a couple more divisions. Vikings brought in Sam Darnold. Okay. He... If they don't move up in the draft for a QB or... I mean, they're going to have to move up if they want a good QB of the top four being... They're not going to get uh, uh, Caleb Williams. I don't know why I blanked there. And no team's going to trade up to two because the Commanders traded Sam Howell. It's very obvious that they're taking a quarterback as well. Patriots will probably take a QB. So, you know, Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels probably gone. So the wild card is J.J. McCarthy. So can you move up to get him? The Giants are going to want to move up. The Vikings are going to want to move up. The Falcons were rumored to, but now they're not anymore with Kirk Cousins. So they're in play to get a Justin Fields or a trade-up spot. So there's a lot of things. I don't think that uh, Bo Nix or Michael Penix will probably go at 12. Or is that is, – do they pick at 12? No, they pick at 11. Probably don't pick them at 11, but you never know. Brought in Aaron Jones for a one-year 7 mil. He's still a good running back. He's getting up there in age. What was he, 2017 out of UTEP? Late round pick, but he's getting his money. I think it's probably fully guaranteed, I believe. But, you know, solid upgrade over Alexander Madison. Uh, not a whole lot outside of that. Oh, okay, yeah, actually, I take that back. Uh, brought in Jonathan Grenard to replace uh, Daniil Hunter, who's solid. Brought in Andrew Van Ginkle, who's solid. You kind of that... 3-4 uh, outside linebacker kind of guy. Brought in Jerry Tillery, who's not bad, honestly. Uh, Blake Cashman is a big one. You know, replace. Um, they didn't really lose a linebacker. They're just bringing him in. Blake Cashman, who was solid for the Texans. I like that pick for the Seahaw, uh, Vikings. It's late. Uh, Falcons, obviously, brought in Perk Thuggins. Perk 30 Thuggins. Getting four-year 180. Uh, happy for Kirk going for, back to Atlanta. By back to Atlanta, I'm pretty sure his wife's from Atlanta. So, I mean, going from or the Midwestern Minnesota over to Atlanta, um, it'll probably be a culture shock for Kirk. But I mean, they just love their old white QBs, don't they? Brought in Ray McLeod, Kadero Hodge resigned. Brought in Darnell Mooney, traded for Rondell Moore with the uh, with the Cardinals. Sent away Desmond Ritter. Get him out of there. Um, I mean, I don't. This makes no sense for Arizona to bring in Desmond Ritter and get rid of Rondell Moore. Makes no sense after after losing uh, Hollywood Brown, losing Rondell Moore. They could look to go receiver. I mean, obviously Marvin Harrison Jr. has been mocked to him, but if they trade down, they still probably will go receiver or potentially tackle. And not a whole lot outside of that, but they're getting you know their depth pieces behind Drake London for receiving. Panthers got rid of uh, Brian Burns, obviously, but brought in Robert Hunt, Damian Lewis, brought in Deontay Johnson. So they're building that offense around Bryce Young. 
getting him some help in the interior. Their tackles are, you know, pretty solidified in Ikyu Kwanu and uh, Moten, Taylor Moten, Taylor Moten. So they're solid outside of that. Maybe they look to take a center. If uh, Jackson Powers Johnson falls to them at 33, I think you turn to the card because he's a very good player. I don't think he will fall to 33, but if he does, or, you know, they could look to move up. They've got a whole bunch of draft picks now, kind of, so they could look to move up towards, you know, the back end of the first round. So brought in John, Deontay Johnson, who I mean, sent away Dante Jackson, but brought in Dane Jackson and Troy Hill, who they're they're fine, I guess. Dane Jackson's a little bit better, but you know Deontay Johnson, that other weapon outside of old ass Adam Thielen, who is he still on there, or was that a one year deal for him? Uh, South. Okay, we're right here. So yeah, they still have Adam Thielen losing DJ Shark and Lavisca Chanel, but Adam Thielen, Deontay Johnson. Hopefully Jonathan Mingo can break out, but you know they're they're getting their weapons for Bryce Young. Uh, brought in DJ Wanham to replace Brian Burns, who will not be as good as Brian Burns, but you know brought in Ashawn Robinson as well, helping boost that front seven. Josie Jewell solid. Saints brought in Cedric Wilson. Okay, that's kind of their Michael Thomas replacement, even though Michael Thomas never played. Brought in or re-signed Demario Davis or agreed to a new two-year deal helping them clear up cap space. Brought in Willie Gay. I miss you, Willie. You were great for the Chiefs. Hope you do your thing over in the new O. <laughs> it's late. I need to go to bed. But reuniting with Tyron Matthew, who signed a new two-year contract, which is cheap. Just, he's getting that uh, hometown discount for him. Bucks brought it. Brought back Baker Mayfield, three-year, $100 million. Great for Baker. OU legend. Uh, I've always loved Baker. I've always believed in him. And I'm glad that he's finally getting the respect he deserves, to be honest. Uh, resign Chase Edmonds, resign Mike Evans, resign Levante David, tagged Antoine Winfield, and then brought in Jordan Whitehead. So, you know, they're just kind of staying the same there. Cardinals, I don't know why they brought in Desmond Ritter. Kyler Murray is obviously their QB, but, like, if he gets injured, yeah, Desmond Ritter's there, but come on now. He's not good. Why would you get rid of Rondell Moore for him? Brought in DJ Dallas, three year, eight point two five million. Yeah, eight and a quarter over three isn't terrible for DJ Dallas, but I don't know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Brought in Chris Moore to re to replace Rondale Moore. Okay. Um, Resigned Elijah Wilkinson, solid. Brought in Jonah Williams on the right side to replace uh, DJ Humphreys, who they just cut. So that's solid. Uh, brought in Bilal Nichols, Chris Barnes, Mac Wilson came back, brought in Sean Murphy Bunting. Just, you know, okay signings for the defense. Uh, Rams, Chiefs legend and Florida legend, Marcus Robinson re-signed one year, five mil. He's not bad. I've always loved Marcus Robinson. Um, he was solid for the Chiefs, underrated. He had that great catch against the Raiders back in the day. Um, that was back when the Raiders were playing in that one stadium that shared with the uh, baseball stadium because it was in the end zone and you could see, like, the dirt and whatnot. Uh, brought in or brought back Kevin Dodson, brought in Jonah Jackson from the Lions, brought in Darius Williams from the uh, Jaguars, brought in Cam Curl, really boosting that secondary. That's awesome. Not pressure to take a corner at 17, so that's still good. Not pressure to take O line either. Could it be a wild card QB spot? Maybe. Niners, um, not a whole lot. Brought in Leonard Floyd, Nitor Gross Matos, Jordan Elliott. Malik Collins, who's who's solid. He's not awful. Um, not a whole lot here for them. Seahawks brought in Sam Howell. Oh, this is the last one. Pick your Super Bowl QB MVP. I'm going to say Patrick Mahomes. That'd be my guess. Um, I don't think any of these guys will probably win Super Bowl MVP, but I'd have to give it to Kelsey. Um, I'd give this one to Rasheed Rice. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco. All right. <laughs> Seahawks brought in Sam Howell, obviously. Good backup for Geno and potentially their future quarterback, potentially. Brought back Noah Fant. Brought back George Fant. Uh, no. I was thinking of Dwayne Brown for some reason. I don't know. Uh, brought back, okay. They brought back Leonard Williams. Three years, $64 million. That's honestly a lot of money. 64.5 over three. $21.5 million. So that's a lot for Leonard, Leonard Williams, but he's he's still good. They just really need defensive interior help 
badly in the worst way possible. Um, Tyrell Dodson kind of to replace, um, what's his name? Jordan Brooks. Did we talk about him for the, for the, uh, Dolphins? Did I just like gloss over him? Where is he at? I did. Yeah. Jordan Brooks, for, Jordan Brooks for the Dolphins. He's, that's a great signing for him after losing all of their linebackers, essentially. Uh, we'll go back to, down to the bottom. So yeah, brought in Ray Sean Jenkins to replace Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams. I'm surprised neither of them neither of them have been signed yet. But brought in Ray Sean Jenkins, Jags legend, I guess. Um, yeah, so a lot of moves have happened. Like I said, I was waiting till the big wave of free agency hit to kind of go over these. Um, yeah, what's your guys' favorite team's move? Unless you're a Cowboys fan, because you guys didn't make a whole lot of them, but. There's still a lot of free agents out there. I mean, let's look at it. Who are the best free agents available? Allen traded to Chicago, yeah. Uh, where's that? Best free agents available. So, yeah, there's still a lot of guys. Tyron Smith, obviously. Mike Williams now. Stephon Gilmore. Chase Young. Clowney. Julian Blackman. Justin Simmons. Like, there's, there's a lot of good free agents available. So, um, these guys will look to sign places in the coming days or weeks oh no Beckham Jr. just got released didn't he yeah so there's a lot of different places teams could go or these guys different teams these guys could go to and and if any big big moves happen I will cover that in a video next video will be a mock draft with you know post free agency and if in it like I said if you guys want to see my grading how I've done my grades and how I've created them go over kind of how they work if you guys are interested in seeing that just let me know and if you guys are liking the content so far, like and subscribe, comment, let me know if you're liking it, if you don't like it, what you want to see in the next video, what film breakdown you want to see next. And that's all I got for you guys today. This is going to be a long video, but uh, I'm going to hop off, get it you know, published so you guys can watch it. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.